This is the uh, the Bert Kreischer prequel to a podcast that we don't normally do. But since Bingo's book is coming out today, we had her on the podcast as a guest. I, I, I had beats written out like a like a serious uh, interview, and <laughs> like a live podcast in Phoenix. <laughs> Bingo was so terrified. I go, just have a drink, have a drink, just relax. And by the time you got, that's why I told her, call Chaley and tell him you're ready to do it now. Because oh. I thought. <sighs> that she, wasn't expressed like that to me. Yeah. Like I'm about, I'm throwing up in my mouth. Can we start now? It was like, if you guys are cool with it, I'm like, well, I'm out the door to the store to get the merchandise. Well, and- I was worried about myself as well. Because okay. I, I got to leave town tomorrow. And this is coming out next week when her book is out. And I. Uh, I got a shit to do, and now I'm drinking, and I'm drinking too much. And anyway, Bingo gets re- <laughs> she starts fucked up, and then gets really fucked up, and then shuffled out at the end. Going, I ruined everything. She wanted no. to shut it down like three times. She just like got gathered her things, a la Lynn Shawcroft, in, a, in, a, in armfuls, and headed towards the door, and then comes back. To- <laughs> it's pretty funny. Anyway, Bingo's new book. I think it's a again a diary of in the moment times uh, uh, time in her first lockup in a mental illness facility in rural Wyoming, which is the only part of Wyoming it is rural, rural. There's no other part. I wish I had back teeth sometimes when I have to say words like rural or brewery or when you brewery eat a salad. gulch. <laughs> we'll call it the gulch. I can't say brewery without back teeth. Well, what we didn't bring up in the beginning, which now we are because we're in the prequel part. Uh, the the history of Bingo in the mental institution is what the diary is. The backstory of how she got there is what you'll get in the podcast. We we touch on that of how she ended up there in the first place and the history of uh, Bingo's mental illness. Yeah, not enough of it. And uh, if you have more questions, at one point we'll do a follow up to this where you fucking crazy people who haunt me <laughs> even in my hometown <laughs> yeah if you have follow up questions we'll do a follow up podcast about your time in a mental institution without you trying to out crazy bingo which we get into and I talk about on stage now that crazy is kind of fashionable people try to out crazy bingo which is why she doesn't come on the road a lot now and uh but yeah, this this I think this podcast is strong. I think we I think we held it upright, Mr. Chaley. Well, you know, yeah. I, I wasn't drinking since noon. But hey, uh, by the way, for 2018, I'd like to do this. I opened up a Gmail account, Stanhope Podcast. So if people want to ask questions related to the podcast or want to ask questions for the podcast, let's just direct them there. Stanhope Podcast at Gmail dot com. Yes. Uh, by the time this comes out. I think uh, my final dates of this year, but get on the mailing list is the most important thing because I will be going to the Far East, to Australia, to UK, to the rest of Europe and other places. Uh, Brian Hennigan can pimp me out like a fucking kid in knickers. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask Bingo other questions about when we met and how they m- mirror Harvey Weinstein, but it's going to have to wait. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> sometimes you're together for life after you bring a girl on a first date to a fucking porno shop. <laughs> you're the cadence of sometimes you feel like a nut when you said that. <laughs> that that's pretty as funny. long as I had a cadence, Bingo's... Diary has the most mad cap fucking beautiful cadence of someone who's spiraling out of their fucking mind. Here's Bingo Bingerman. You are listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. <laughs> What's this? Donna? <laughs> Uh, it's I I don't know. It came from somewhere. I washed it out and I put it out for someone. It looks like it's a bottle of vodka that came in a reusable tin. Well, yeah, it's a like a travel mug, but it's a thermos because it's got a small mouth, which is fucking completely worth. If it's a if that's a gift from a fan, it's worthless. 
if you put anything in there other than just straight alcohol. But that's what it was. It says here, vodka distilled in France. So I have no idea. I didn't, uh, someone sent us a mug, I assume, sent us a mug. There's a coffee mug that I, I thought it said unity on it. It's a coffee mug. You're not reading it unless you're some bored fucking housewife. To tell me why it's I don't like Mondays or <laughs> some shit. It just I thought it said unity, and someone last night of football saw it was unty, and the the handle is the C. C. It's cunty. Yeah, and I never. It's been around here forever. <laughs> and he goes, "Where'd you get this?" I said, "I don't know if someone left shit here." If uh, some fan sent it, if I bought it at a f- yard sale, I don't know what all this shit is. There's shit everywhere that someone could lay credit to. <laughs> hey, I bought you that. I didn't even notice it was on the wall for the last five years. Sorry. <laughs> that, Sorry. That would be funny. That would be funny. People would just send you a letter. Hey, uh, did you get that thing I sent you? Because you never said anything. <laughs> I do. We're going to actually, we're actually going to close on that <laughs> after this podcast. Today we're uh, uh, we have a an author whose upcoming book. Actually, I think the book is coming out the day that this is released. This podcast. This is a few days earlier. This is actually the anniversary of <laughs> Amy Bingo Ding Dong Dingaman's <laughs> coma. Coma. It's a year ago oh, today shit. that Bingo yeah, fucking went a, down wow, those steps right ago. there, smashed her skull, and uh, yeah, and here she is promoting a book. <laughs> <laughs> it took that to fucking dash to the skull to get you <laughs> off your ass and actually put this book out. All right. Because you realized right. how short life is. A sense of urgency <laughs> was instilled upon your noggin. <laughs> She's only a year old as far as she knows. <laughs> it's, it's AC, after coma. Yes. I would recommend being in a coma for anybody. I came out feeling strong as shit. I say coma is the way to go. What, well, what, what's your last, you might what's your cl- first memory of being out of a coma? Can you tell us that? Um, It's like your first day of being alive. I have one memory of when I was a toddler in a, in a, what do you call it? A fucking pram. A pram. What are you fucking British all of a sudden? Stroller. (laughs) But I can't think of the stroller. stroller. Yes. But I I don't know if that's a memory that I created when I heard the story repeated. Yes. Memory's completely faulty. That's what what's, happened. what's your first memory of being out of a coma? Okay, I'll tell you what it was, and then I've seen a picture recently, so it might have been that. But what it was is um, I had just gotten the trach out, so I had a bandage on my neck for the trach, and then you had the trach taped up to your neck, <laughs> and so we're together and we swapped trachs. Yeah, that's probably a picture that's, memory. Okay, American, probably, American yeah. Gothic <laughs> with the pitchfork. Do you have any memories that are not picture related? Like no. Fear, anything like that? No, I, I really don't. I don't. Do you remember any hospital rehab shit? The only thing I remember is getting mad at that cardboard person and yep. I punched her out. Yeah, oh. in the brain rehab facility, they had cardboard cutouts like employee of the month kind of things but they were uh, dwarfed and morphed so they'd be little cardboard cutouts with the person's name it's the freakiest fucking thing you would do it is a a little off-putting to to put like in the lobby where everyone walks right when they come out of uh... yeah that lady is going to be testing your fucking ability (laughs) to and now she's a giant amorphic dwarf. I don't know what amorphic means. <laughs> that gets us into Bingo's book. There's <laughs> a lot of words you use in this book. You don't know, know what they mean anymore. I know. Bingo's book is an in-the-moment diary where she was taking notes when she went into a mental institution in 2004 which you had no memory then. That's a good thing. You don't have to worry so much about your traumatic brain injury a year ago. Before that, you didn't remember shit anyway because you're a fucking mental patient. That's true. (laughs) 
Don't I hate say, to say it like it. you're fucking. That's true. <laughs> How's Don't that? Don't say it like you're developmentally disabled now. <laughs> uh, I read this twice. The first time when we first got together, 2005, mm-hmm. officially. And uh, one of those terrifying things where you go, oh shit, my girlfriend <laughs> wants me to read her writing. And we've known how many comedy couples where <laughs> one has to say, oh, yeah, the other one's funny. No, they're not. <laughs> but I've been writing jokes. Oh, you're not going to help. <laughs> you just read my poetry, the old bit I used to do. Yeah. No one wants to read your poetry. When you gave me this diary, I had to read it. And I was so wincing, and I was laughing every other page. And I read it again when you were, this is 12 years in the making. Yeah. Why? Why? Why did it take you 12 years to put this out? Oh, some of it, it's all different. Some of it was I couldn't read the, the what was the content. Um, I just couldn't get through it. To like to proof it, well, b- yeah, and then bingo. some of it was I was completely lazy, and you overdo every fucking thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's that, you fucker? Sorry, I, I, I've been I've been <laughs> leaning on Bingo to uh, have have another cocktail. I'm nervous, and now I think maybe I over <laughs> right. overdid Bingo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I I read it again a year ago when you were definitely going to put it out and then coma time still fucking brilliant and then I just skimmed through it today because I was doing due diligence I'm going to interview you like a real radio <laughs> guy would interview an author he doesn't know and I wrote down bullet points but just reading some of these passages it's Everything, the, it's a diary of her going into a mental institution where you, you just had a deep slide into insanity. Well, it's a long term thing, but yeah. it, it, it mounted up quick where real fast you were living in Lander, Wyoming, which if there is a middle of nowhere, this is in the center. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first in Maine. Cross section of the <laughs> middle of fucking nowhere. So they put you in what they have, the psycho wing of whatever hospital they have, some mash unit. Lander Valley Hospital. Wearing. Do you remember well, what you're wearing? I, Robin, one of my best friends, um, found me in a complete episode and I was wearing a ball gown. I remember what it looks like. It was ridiculous. I was barefoot. I didn't have any shoes. And I was wearing a wedding ring that he had given me when he proposed to me so long ago but it never had a stone in it because it was at the lander bar and he got it out of the lost and found box so he proposed to me with this lost and found ring which it didn't have a stone and i would cut myself with it you said i i actually skimmed through that yeah in the book. that was my cut uh, yeah you Utensil. were punching yourself in the head with the- well i mean a a ring that holds a stone that is missing a stone is a weapon. <laughs> it is, in fact, it would look like a parakeet scratched you all over your isn't face. Is that one of those uh, 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 satellite radio? Uh, uh, cat's claw. Cat's claw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it claw. would. It, I mean, if you look at a ring, it would be basically little tiny scratches. But all she over would you. pound her head on yeah. anything sharp when, or a tree. <laughs> I, 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 you're diagnosed so many fucking things, and we were went over this a, a lot in the last special, where you're, you're bipolar, schizoaffective, but it might be borderline, borderline personality. personality. You, you just keep yeah. making up fucking names. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you, you'd hurt yourself. That's what. Mm. What was the what was the final straw that brought you? To your best friend having to drag you to the fucking worst mental institution. It's either ah uh, fuck. Hold on. Did, I have to say, just so the readers know, you being barefoot in a ball gown on the street 
with scratches on your face is not a reason to throw no. you in a metal is it? That is, <laughs> that's, that's, that's I, every other I knew day. you like that. I've, no, we've been on the road and that's been a situation. That's true. So I just, I've got, I've got to put that back because I don't know how much background <laughs> is in the book of like, there is no background okay, in the book. So this the is book a good starts, the, it's the, I have to specify, this is a diary that she wrote in the moment for 33 days of, Oh, I just woke up in a mental institution and I have no fucking idea what's going on. No one's talking to me. No one's telling me anything. It's fucking terrifying. Uh, and it's her as she goes in the moment. This is not her reflecting. So do you remember even secondhand what precipitated just that day? I think it was all of what we already said with the ball gun scratch and whatever, but um, it was a delusional state. I mean, I wasn't with us anymore. And there's a videotape of that. I have never got it back, but... Someone videotaped you, like Robin intervention? Did. Robin did. Like, this is what it was like before we signed the papers. <laughs> Robin got it on film. Girls gone crazy. <laughs> Girls gone crazy. <laughs> so uh, you were just, you, and they dealt with it. This wasn't like one day. They dealt I've been with sinking this. for a while. I was in New Orleans, and I got sent back to Robin and his parents' house, and they took care of me for a while, and then I got locked up. We've been through this. Chaley and I have been through this. That was your first rodeo. That could have been the title of the book, which is Let Me Out, A Madhouse Diary. But this could have been called My First Rodeo because <laughs> we've been funny. through it since where you go, I don't want to fucking. In my book, we talk about the time I would have had her locked up if I was if we weren't on the road in Rock Island, fucking Illinois. With like, her. Yeah, with her going. I, I, bad I can't. timing. Ooh, bad timing. <laughs> Real Land bad or timing. Wyoming? Probably. No, not worse. No, that Rock the Island would have been worse. worse. Yeah, right. Well, the other time she was locked up, not like not like this, but while we were on the road, she she was not with us. And that was a whole different thing. Because when she in Rock Island, when she went blackout and all that that was just insane and trying to maintain getting to shows and all that stuff it was just a, it was it was a nightmare no matter where you are in the perfect circumstance you always have to it's and I, that's why i empathize with parents who have to decide whether to report their kids to the cops well i don't want them in prison because it's a horrible place it's going to make them worse but i can't have them out loose here like this fucking drug addicted or whatever it is it, it's always a tough call the so tipping point yeah. i empathize the, the the diary starts with you waking up and writing to jenya your other best friend rob and jenny were your two best Those friends my God. Yeah. and the, it opens with letters to both of them that you had written saying i don't know where i am i don't know what's going on i don't know if it's more emotional for me because i've been with you through those mm -hmm. similar experiences, but it's fucking crushing. And then it gets funny. <laughs> and then it's crushing. And then it gets funny. I would have never remembered the funny had I written. I, 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 I read the funny and I remembered it, but. That's what I wanted to ask you. How much of that whole experience would you remember today if you hadn't written all this out? I do remember it after I've read it, and I remember more of it because of that. I wouldn't remember shit. I I I I I stole some uh, some beats, oh. things that stood out to me to see what you remember just off the top okay. of your head. Oh, that's interesting. Because when I wrote both of my books, I had to call a lot of people to <laughs> fact check a yeah. lot of it I'd written about before. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, god damn. Now I remember this. Now I remember this. Okay, what you got? I got this. Hang on. Okay. All right. There's the, the one that stands out. And this is, uh, well, the, all right. I'll slow burn it. Okay. <laughs> At one point, mm -hmm. when you're entrenched and you kind of know what's going on, you realize that you 
are on the list for a day pass to go to the salon. <laughs> and you can't understand <laughs> why you would be going to the hair salon. Yes. Because you have no hair. You are shaved bald at that point. <laughs> It's tough because I changed the names in the book to protect all of these people. So I can't say the name, but this person who I called the Godfather after a while, after the hair thing. Um, you can say it on a podcast. No. <laughs> anyway, no, no. <laughs> but um, Graham and Robin were coming to visit me. And you have to be monitored by the staff at all times. But he. But wrote, they're lazy. They're, uh, they're lazy sometimes, yeah. And he checked me off for a trip to the salon, so they would think I was went to the salon room, and we snuck off to the quiet room instead. And oh wait, salon room? I thought you were like getting a day pass. No, to go you to, can't like, go out. Costcars. You can't leave that. The- okay, a salon. I think it's another term for like a, a general meeting area, like the library or the foyer. Well, or something. in the book, in the diary, you say. Which is weird because I have no hair. So yeah, you so were I was bald at the time. Okay, uh, but a salon. The salon is a place that they would. Yeah. I can't imagine a mental house pedicure place. Did they have Koreans yeah, in Lander, would, Wyoming? They would not let you <laughs> off campus for anything. All right, I don't. I don't know. You've been to other places. He just marked a check in a box and helped me the fuck out. That's what just happened. Just got you out of the fucking bad, bad place. Yeah, and I could go into the quiet room, which was empty, with my two best friends, Robin and Graham. There's a, there's a, there's a beat. What? Well, hang on. At, at the point that you went in to the institution, had you been diagnosed at all? No. No idea I got what's diagnosed wrong for the first time in my life in this mental institution. So you had no idea. No, I was just. What was the what was the progression of the diagnoses? What do you mean? Like, what do they say at first? Because I know at some point you talk about doing the lithium shuffle. Oh yeah, that explain was that. Awful. You want that first? Yeah. Well, first of all, I was diagnosed as something something and schizoaffective bipolar. Um, bipolar was the heavy hitter. And um, what, what did you say? The me? lithium shuffle you just... Oh, it was um, amongst the inpatients. We all called it the lithium shuffle. It, anybody who was on the lithium. And it just sucked. I, I'm asking because lithium is the mainstay treatment for bipolar and it's my best medication to this day yeah uh, so you've obviously grown accustomed to it oh absolutely but at, at first in the beginning it's way different like i remember seeping spit out of my mouth and trying to write and having like uh when you go to the dentist yeah <laughs> What is it? Novocaine. Novocaine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, like that. But my hands wouldn't barely, barely were grip. able to write. A- and you grip. couldn't, you couldn't walk. You were, you were seriously paralyzed. Was this ramping up on the dosages or is this them trying to figure out the dose to give you? Well, they started me a little bit high and went way low and then, and then ramped up after that. Was there a dartboard they threw a dart in there? Uh, give her three like milligrams. <laughs> I just yeah, don't know why. A lot of milligrams. I don't know why you would be like you would have those side effects. And is it because your body come becomes acclimated and then you absolutely level? okay? So then you start to and level and out. I would tell anybody stand up. Oh, okay, all right. I would tell anybody who's you, trying out you lithium. You sound like you're on the lithium shuffle right now, and it's <laughs> oh, my I'm fault. I'm sorry. Well, you got me drunk. God damn it. <laughs> How am I supposed to talk well, about all this well, when I'm drunk? Well, well, That's your own goddamn fault. I want you to get used to doing interviews. Oh, I'm going to be terrible at it. Because all on. these people who go, hey, will you do my podcast? And I don't, I don't have time or I'm busy. <laughs> I'm going to put them on you. And they're going to ask you questions like, uh, so uh, what do you want to do with this book? <laughs> do you, oh, I know the well, one. What the, Did you really write this book yourself? Oh boy, that would be special. That's not, Fucking dare you. <laughs> that's a question I have, but we'll get back to it. No, I'm gonna close I, I on will it. Tell I try you, to write this in a perfect that. arc, 
But no, I want no, you to get I'm back to a lith- lithium shuffle. No, it's dude, fuck up my whole time. Oh, okay, sure. I didn't sorry. know you had that coming. So, so the, the lithium, lithium shuffle. The, oh, I just explained it. I mean, you're you're paralyzed. How but it, lithium takes a while to get through the body, and unfortunately, that can take weeks. Mm. Weeks and weeks sometimes. I remember we had a, a friend here mm-hmm. that we were afraid would uh, go through your uh, medicine cabinet as they would mine. And uh, <laughs> you you were afraid that they'd just start eating your lithium like it was fucking good drugs. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't. Not only does it not work for that, mm-hmm. it could kill you. Right. Um, well, none of the, none of the psych drugs that I take you should do in excess. Well, they, they, it's, there's no high to that. But no, there's no. We're high talking about ever. drunk friends that go, oh, I think he's hiding Xanax. I'll take these, and you go, no, 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 no. That's her lithium. Don't. Do I think that. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, we all know who we're talking about. <laughs> I think I know. He's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay, what else you got for me? Oh, I, uh, let's see. This is just an example of mm-hmm. the writing. The writing in this, you you cheated like I do. Uh-huh. You had nothing but a pen and, and a, a dictionary. dictionary. And you even yourself admitted you don't know most of the big words that you found. I not this only is, don't this is, know This would be them. a douchebag like book soup, uh, <laughs> book signing question where they go, what was your process? I think your process was find a big word. Well, here's the thing. I can tell you exactly how this happened. Um, not only do I not know the word, I have no clue how to pronounce the word. Honestly, but the thing of it was, I wrote very rhythmically in my own head. Maybe not to you, no, but to no, me. no. You, when you read this, it sounds like does it music. Really? It okay. sounds like you're writing lyrics to music. A lot of it, a lot of it's scattershot, fucking crazy. Yeah, but a lot of it is, I'm tripping. I'm going to write in these perfect waves of words. Well, here's that you the don't thing. get. Here's the thing: is I would search the dictionary. For a word, because I had to kill massive amounts of time being locked up in concrete walls. So I had my dictionary, and it felt like my best friend. And I would go through the dictionary and search for the word that meant what I wanted it to mean and had the number of syllables that it had to have to fit into my sentence. Does that make sense? Yes, that's songwriting. Okay. Right? Would you always start at A? <laughs> well, she did. I mean, she has a whole. I, I, I skimmed through a passage about just that, where she's talking about I'm writing just to you know kill time. Basically, uh-huh. she writes it more and and eloquently in a manic in a manic kind of state. And that thing where you're talking about, like she's probably at the. I'm guessing here when you said that, that was is well put in that. It sounds like it was written in waves. She's probably going through that in her head, but then having to stop and to find a word and then finding that word and then that opening up that door. I could see where that would once she, that was the victory. She found the word and then now she could, you know, kind of ride that Move wave. On. But well, to have to stop every time to find a word that you don't even know exists. But I loved the pause of my writing to find the word because it killed the time yeah. of being And that's what it. that whole passage I found today was about how I'm writing and you're shitting on your own writing. All the time, yeah. Self-deprecating but that all the time. I'm only doing this because the fucking walls are closing in on me and it was a way to get through that and writing was wasn't a passion. You didn't want to be no. fucking Hemingway. You wanted to... The white worms you referred yeah, to. Yeah, go off the page. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Is that the white but worms, like the, the spaces It's the in spaces between? in the book. Yeah, that's, that's the white what worms to me. I was going to say, Whoa. that's what crazy people do. Yeah. That's like the uh, a brilliant mind. This movie, I mean, this movie, this, uh, her diary reminded me of so many crazy people movies, uh, 
a brilliant mind now where he saw patterns in the, the, all the, the the yarn connecting all of the yep the, yeah uh, <laughs> all the, the obviously on the one flew over the cuckoo's nest as she develops all these characters that were she was actually with mm -hmm. And the best one, which no one knows. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No. no. Close. The ninth configuration. Oh, right. William Peter Blatty. The dialogue. Because you would write in the moment as someone's talking to you, what mm -hmm. they're saying, what they're describing to you. You had a new roommate. No, you would write down. I'm writing as you, yeah. you'd actually write. As they're talking to me, she's describing this... It's so fucking beautiful. I'm not even going to try to find it and read it. But she got a new roommate. Don't know the name. It's a fake name anyway. Name. Yeah. She's writing down as her new roommate is telling her her story. She's her third time in, I think. She had tried to kill herself. She got out the second time and found divorce papers tacked to the outside of the door with the locks changed so she went to a motel to kill herself with a box cutter and it was cutting into her throat trying to and then woke up still conscious later on very similar to the diana hone story that's in my mm -hmm. book uh diana actually killed herself uh said that the doctor said that she was even prying the opening open. Oh, to, geez, dude. Yeah, I know. It's very graphic. But Bingo's like taking this down like a court stenographer. Yeah. And they said that when they brought her in, the carotid artery was exposed. <laughs> Chili's going to puke. Yeah. Chili's going to puke. Uh -huh. Easy, <laughs> easy, Captain. But no, this is the best part. After Bingo goes on to describe her and the... All of that, she said that the girl was upset that she can't get her Midwestern sensibilities out of her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's a, just such a like, weird twist. But anything they said, I wrote down. Anything everyone said, I got. My quotes are accurate quotes. I didn't remember anything. I didn't write a story. This is... What happened? I know, and that's why the the ninth configuration. Just look up ninth configuration movie quotes, and just mm -hmm. that staccato, just brilliant dialogue from a sane person. You're writing down dialogue just like that. I, I, one of the ones I read from the ninth configuration that I remember later. Uh, uh, when it's the crazy person talking to uh, Colonel Kane. I'm not going to describe the whole movie, mm -hmm. but he says, I want to go to the beach. And Kane says, it's nighttime and it's raining. You're determined to start an argument. It's just like <laughs> this perfectly crazy. And th you have real life shit that reminds me of my favorite movies yeah. from that. And a lot of it is hilarious unintentionally. A lot of it's hilarious intentionally. I wouldn't, I didn't read what I wrote for a couple of years. And then when I finally got the courage and I thought I was mentally okay to read it, I was shocked at how much funny was in there. I had a way better sense of humor in the fucking shittiest time ever than I ever thought. That, and that's, you couldn't write this today. No, no. And that's one of the main points. You're not putting this out because you're trying to you know, be an advocate for mental health care. No. How much of that kind of crazy? Because most people who dealt with this bipolar, not the... Uh, New bipolar. I talk about this on stage where people would come up to you and try to out crazy you at they shows. They want to say, well, how many institutions have you been locked up and how many meds are you on? I'm like, go fuck yourself. I ain't in a competition. This is ridiculous. But do you know how often I get that? It's all the fucking I know. Time. I do a bit about it. It's you, a competition. Too bad you haven't been on the road. You take I've credit for my coma, whole I've been in a coma, you dumb dick. <laughs> It's, uh, it's only it's been 11 months <laughs> uh, 
But uh, how much of that do you miss? Because that's what they say about people with they go off their meds because they miss the crazy that gives them the creative outlet that is your diary. Okay. You're doing good now. I mean, coma aside, that was a different no, ordeal. I, I, I'll tell you, I've been doing good for so long that I know, for me, I'm not a pill pusher. I would never push pills on anyone or say, you need to do this. But for me, I have to be medicated. If I am not medicated, I am completely dysfunctional and out of this world. You did talk about a guy in the diary. Mm-hmm. One of them that no, like, we call him Kevin. <laughs> all right, whatever. Guy. Some guy that was like fucked, and he used to strangle cats to mm. watch their eyeballs bulge oh, out. Yeah, and he was fascinated with the human anatomy, and to a, he'd fuck cats with a toothbrush, like all sorts of shit. And she says, uh, "I used to be all about holistic, but mm. fuck that." Uh, Homeo therapy. Some people need fucking meds. He was a sick duck. <laughs> this guy needed some meds. And he, he, this particular guy, got a shot in his ass. Because they wouldn't heavy. trust him for hiding meds under his <laughs> yeah, tongue. Oh, I thought it was a cat heavy. with a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I swear to Christ, this kid could have complete conversations with me like a normal person after he got that shot. Again, I'm no pill pusher. I'm just saying and something. And you dialogue the, 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 the back and forth you have with these people. I just imagine you scribbling in a notebook while these people are talking to you and then not noticing because scribbling in a notebook is the least weird thing you can do in there. I remember more scribbling than I remember anything else because I was never without my paper and pen unless they wouldn't allow it. This will never be a New York Times bestseller, no. but anyone who's dealt with mentally ill people or people who've been uh, incarcerated, which is the right word because it's very much like prison. I've been around for other times you've been incarcerated. Right. And it is prison-like. Like They wouldn't give you anything. You had to hide your pen and paper at first, didn't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. I, I have a question. Yeah. Because because you woke up, how did you find out you were in a mental institution? Did in they the tell you? Time? Yeah. Um, I woke up in a hospital bed, and what had happened was me and Robin were seeking out mental health care for me for a while, mm. and... The two main heavy hitters were like, it looks like this is where your future is. All right. Is this going. ain't getting better. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. that, that's basically what they said. Because right. cause being locked up, at least in prison, you go to court and they tell you you're guilty, you're, you get a sentencing and all that. You just woke up. And Don't get me wrong. Wondered, I was confused as I, fuck. I, yeah. The the first thing in my book is a letter to It opens with that, and it's Jen. so strong. Just the opening, that letter to Jen, that is so powerful. Like, I don't know where... You didn't even know where to mail it to. Oh, there's no mail. You were just writing. I was just writing. Uh, having no idea exactly where you were, but guessing you were probably... I guess I'm in a mental institution... I'm so sorry that I did this to you. Where are my shoes? <laughs> Just, it's so... And this guy's walking around with my tube socks. I remember that. There's only one guy delivering your shit to you little at a time. And he was carrying around my tube socks forever. It's really awkward. But we've, we've visited you in yeah, establishments like that, where it's, right. it's like prison. How much of that... At one point, you talk about... I think it was the new roommate where she had, yeah, it was because she had been in, the, it was her third time. So she knew how to smuggle shit in her vagina. Oh, that was, that was Marianne. And yes, she knew all of that. She taught me so uh, much. How to hide razor blades. She hid hers in the inseam so she could cut herself. Like, not like prison where you're going to shank someone. 
It's personal use. Yeah, <laughs> personal <laughs> use only for entertainment purposes only. Uh, smoking. Uh, how to smoke and not get caught she in the bathroom with the vent and certain times a day she she charted out when you could smoke because it sucked instead of blue so and she, she charted carried everything chew out. for the rest of the time and she gave me a chew one time and that went from great i just said i feel so much better i was having a really rough time i feel so much better and then my next line was like i feel so much worse i was puking everywhere and that was let's see who was it it was someone's birthday that day are you allowed tobacco products in there no Not at way all. Like, sorry she wasn't even allowed her guitar she had to steal her guitar snuck it out there's a few things i don't know if they're actually in the book but you told me about like mm-hmm. where you Snack time. You weren't allowed snacks for a lot of snack oh, yeah. time. Snack and meds, but I don't get snacks. I just get meds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which I can see where that would be bothersome to you. Oh, man. At the time. Jeez. Dinner was di- like was there, is it, is it, the egg. It's an egg. Okay, it's an egg. Okay, the is it either egg. jello or egg? Maybe no, there's the two egg. different stories. There was a, is this there snack was time a, or is this meal? This I don't know if this time. is in the diary, but I know you it told is, me about it. It is. No, snack time. I n- didn't get a snack, and I hated the dietitian cunt, is what I used to call it. But oh, we have her was, coffee mug here. Now, I don't <laughs> mind saying her name on the podcast, but her name was Margie, except finally I found out her name was a, it was a hard G, so it was Margie. And I was like, that makes everything worse. <laughs> I don't get my jello snack, and her name's Margie Hard G. What? That was terrible. So, so tell me about the egg. Oh, so I went in for a snack time and cool staff would, um, cook me up an egg, uh, in the evening because I wasn't supposed to have anything. And, um, anyway, so one time this young, young girl, uh, was gonna cook me an egg and she put the egg in a microwave within the eggshell. I call her. A Did you know this was going to go poorly? Yeah, and I, I was like, I couldn't wait. I thought this was great. I call her a pea queef in my book. Pea queef? Yeah, I don't know why, but I called her a pea. That queef wasn't in my an addiction, every. <laughs> no, I came up with that, but but anyway, she stuck it in the microwave, blew to shit, and it was the greatest thing that had happened to me that day. <laughs> At some point, you have a, a breaking out of jail story where you oh, went yeah. into the catacombs. This is this is uh, she she got put in for the first three days was in Lander, Wyoming. Which then they moved the her worst. to the great metropolis of Evanston, Wyoming. Lander's where we went. We yes. we were but there. we went to yes. Evanston too. That's where we went to that yeah. bar with the horse track, off track, off track betting, betting. <laughs> dog racing. Fucking greatest day, yeah. and it was <laughs> World Cup. Uh, so you're in Evanston now, and yeah. they have this old. You, it's you a larger picture, facility. A larger. You can picture a Wyoming antiquated mental institution. Is Wyoming hasn't really adapted to the times past when it was the Wild West. <laughs> so you can imagine <laughs> or the Dust this, Bowl. Let's say the Dust Bowl. <laughs> no, that's Oklahoma or well, Kansas. That period of time. Yeah. No, when everyone no. started leaving. <laughs> it's they have old school mental ill, you know. But it was an upgrade from where she was in Atlanta. Well, right? they have closed this place now. But you yeah. ex- you you describe it, Bingo. Which one? The second one. Where you went? You Evans. stuck into that. You don't want to go into the going down into the catacombs of the old okay. mental hospital. Well, me and my Marion roommate. Um, she got this. It's a weird. I know you had to change the name, but you're changing the pronunciation. I know, of Marion. I know, I am. <laughs> Marion. I know, I am. She got this book from the library, and the library had about seven books in it, and it was um, just three hole punch papers in a binder, and that was the book. And it was about kind of like your book has been for the last yeah, twelve years. Yeah, <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm not done with it. No, it's, it's already true. written. You can't say you're not done with a diary. <laughs> you have to buy all those three ring binders. But anyway, we found it's out. It's like if Anne Frank had lived and tried to reshop the thing. <laughs> Hang on, I've got to make some changes. <laughs> well, we we found out 
all the buildings on the site, the hospital site. And the oldest building was the biggest building in the middle that was abandoned for years and years and years. And we wanted to break into there um, off this book that we had. This is and when you're already like a trustee week three, where they let I was you out. In. I was in you, good. But you, you, how are you able to oh, get out? Oh, this is how. I'm sorry. We were able to get out of the main hospital because on campus you walked a very short amount of way and then there was the cafeteria. So that's how you got outside. And you had to be a certain card level, like white card, pink card. So it does work like prison. You yeah, get it does. to a place where you oh, I'm white carded now. I no, can, it absolutely works like that. I can like s- that. stroll outside and smoke so a cigarette. So the only thing I was able to do was go from outside with an escort from the hospital to the cafeteria. And we concocted this plan that we were going to break into the oldest hospital and see if they did the um, lobotomies there because that's what we heard. That's what was in this book. So you had to have the same kind of idea of mental hospitals that you see in movies. Well, fuck yeah. Except for a fucking girl interrupted, which you shit on. I do shit on there. Yeah. It's I, not like that. I, I picture it more like Stand By Me. <laughs> like, like these kids are like, like no, that's where they do the lobotomies. <laughs> we're going to go to the middle yeah. building, middle but earth. You were 27 at this point. I was so 27. You're no child, but eh, you still want to see the fucking dungeon. Basically, she had a crowbar in her Corvette that she stole. She had a what? Keys. What did you she just had say? a yellow Corvette. And here's the thing, like she wasn't supposed to have the keys at all, but she had two sets. So she, she taught me how to s- like smuggle a lot of things in my vagina. What I could you smuggle in your vagina? <laughs> based well, on me? your. Oh, God. Listen, you're slurring. I got you drunk. Oh, shit. I thought you you'd got be... me drunk, baby. It's all right. So what did you learn how to smuggle in your vagina? A crowbar and a Corvette. Me with cigarettes. A crowbar and a Corvette. <laughs> how do you smuggle a cigarette in your vagina? Plastic bag, you can shove it up your pussy. But Come it on, would break so easily. No, trust me. Come on, me. you ever sit on a soft pack of Marlboro pussy. Lights? My smoke stayed in one piece. Go fuck yourself. Those were the days. <laughs> Doug all ham hands. This cigar keeps breaking. <laughs> hey, so easy down there. Gentle, gentle. <laughs> That's why I say you could not write this book again. That's, I know, there's that's no what way, earlier but... when I was saying I have a question about this. You okay. could not write this book no, again. No, I no, not not even close. I could never write a book again. I still am amazed that you had the wherewithal to take these notes and they that it was done. You're very lucky that you had that distraction, but at the same no, time, no, it's very lucky that yeah. I had the mental capability to do it because a lot of people. This didn't. is Go ahead. from "Let Me Out" by Amy Bingo Bingaman. This is no hospital. This is no place of rehabilitation. This is a game, and I am losing. I have a ribbon, and you have a gun. Doctor Feeler is by far the sickest human being I've ever come into contact with. Is this really happening? And then you go to the next beat. Yeah. Dr. Feeler is not his <laughs> real name. but No, it's not his real name. His real name's in my book. Oh, <laughs> ah, shit. No. You're going to get me in trouble, No, I put, I, I put that in my book. I can't, I'm not going to say <laughs> where. I'll do it after it's out. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, I don't I, I've skipped over so many points. Oh, okay. But how much of... That prison, that's why we talked about razor blades in your vagina, is necessary. Because when you were up at the Valley... Uh, oh, boy. Uh, what, did, what did that guy send Valley us? Arts the coffee Center? mug. The other coffee mug. No, yeah. Valley Arts, Valley Arts, Arts and yeah. Crafts yeah. Center. Right. Yeah, Because no, that's all they did for mental health care. They, yeah. Hey, you have... Uh, Ceramics. <laughs> yeah. Here's some color crayons. <laughs> Work it out yourself. <laughs> Uh, how much of that is necessary when you talk about this guy that you know, fucked necessary? cats with what do you mean? toothbrushes? How much of that prison-like atmosphere oh, is necessary? How much of it is due to negligence in knowing specific cases? I'm I'm right in the center of things here because 
Um, uh, what the you, lifestyle there in a hospital like that. All right, hold that thought. Uh, let's take a break. We'll be right back after we have to jam a commercial in here. Hey, hey, brooklinen.com, Brooklinen Sheets. You know, I'm kind of a cunt when it comes to what I promote. And sheets are important, just like everything else sleep-related. Sleeping is my new hallucinogen. I used to be young and randy, and I would uh, I'd go tripping balls in the desert, and we'd do all sorts of things and not bathe appropriately for days on end. I still don't bathe appropriately, but my new tripping is sleeping well, and the most important thing is the bed you're lying on. And if that doesn't have good sheets, not the Target sheets we bought because they were turquoise and matched Bingo's hair, no, good sheets, like... The thread count, things like that matter. If you want to go into the lucid dreaming atmosphere when you can bring yourself to waking up because your fucking girlfriend won't stop calling you and you shut off the phone and you can go back into the same dream that was perfect, you need to have perfect sheets. Brooklinen.com. If you live in a out back, nowhere jerk water burg like I do, you can't get good sheets. Can't go down to the mercantile and just pick them up. Hey, get me some uh, Egyptian cotton. Now, you take what they get, but Brooklinen delivers them right to your door, and I swear to Christ, if you don't like them, I'm going to come and cuddle up with you and sleep together. And if you wake up in the middle of the night, I'm going to call bullshit on you. Doug, Brooklinen, we- what's a call to action, Chaley? Hey, Doug, would you say that quality sheets make a quality sleep? I think I just said it, you <laughs> fucking asshole. But it took that long to yeah, say. Yeah, Yeah, but I spelled it out. I gave it. I gave it depth and feeling. Pour me a fucking drink, lady. That, most high end bedding is marked up by more than three hundred percent by the time it reaches the store. Brook Linen makes quality luxury sheets and bedding accessible to everyone. And it's that time of season. It's a great gift idea, Doug. Yeah, you get someone who talks too much won't go to fucking bed. Buy, buy him Brooklyn and sheets and go, Merry Kwanzaa, you fuck. And have him sleep for 12 hours. You got hey, a this roommate? Is, this is luxury bedding underpriced, so go to bed already. <laughs> I love how you jammed that in. <laughs> All right, go to Brooklyn and sheets. Here, I'll start it off. Wait, Ready? Brooklinen.com has an exclusive. Op- I was going to get to the highlighted parts. I oh. tried to put a funny part. You fucking... You're such a cock block to my perfect read. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. I only got a uh, pillowcase out of your, your bedding set that they, they, they sent you. And uh, I love my Brooklinen pillowcase. It's the most important part of the whole sheet set. <laughs> Try this pillowcase I don't know and the they, rest. <laughs> I don't know if they have a duvet, but it's not important. They do. Pillowcase is best. Sheet second best. That's the whole thing. If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't have known because you get in a set, you get four pillowcases. Now you've got. We don't three. even have a top sheet anymore. Maybe we should get a new one from Brooklyn because I think Bingo might have made a fucking goblin costume out of it for Halloween. <laughs> a very comfortable goblin yeah. costume. She sleeps standing up like that girl from The Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the one bent over? No, the one coming out oh. of the well. You know, oh, with yeah. her fucking long turquoise hair. Hey, Brooklinen.com has an exclusive offer, Doug, just for your listeners. What is it? Hey, get twenty dollars off. What are they, crazy? $20 off and free shipping? Better get it now while they're in business. In these economic times, $20 off and free shipping when you use promo code STANHOPE at brooklinen.com. In fact, Brooklinen is so confident. William Hung Confident from American Idol from 10 years ago. That's my reference. They're William Hung Confident. That you'll love your new sheets, that they offer you a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty. Is that their life or your life? We'll, f- we'll, we'll figure yeah. that out with the lawyers. A lifetime guarantee on all their sheets and comforters. There's no reason not to give these sheets a try for yourself or as a gift for this holiday season if you are still saddled with the type of Friends and family that you have to buy them something for the holidays. If you have those people in your life, they're barnacles. Scrape them off. But if you do, 
buy him Brooklyn and sheets and then tell him sleep like the dead. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code Stanhope at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com, promo code Stanhope. I hate the fact that we have to read the spelling. B-R-O, Brook Linen. If you can't spell it, you don't deserve. You deserve target sheets, you fuck. <laughs> Brook Linen, these are the best sheets ever. But up, 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 back to bingo. She's drunk. She's drinking a cold brew you coffee. You told me to get drunk, so. I told you to have a cocktail. Yeah, Don't worry. Don't me. worry. Your book speaks for itself. I, 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 I sometimes read this and I think, is this the, is this the little girl I married? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Kanopka's here for a limited time only. <laughs> Tom Kanopka's going out into the real world. We're, we're leaving our baby goodbye. Well, he's staying at Bisbee, but he's going. Uh, he's moving to Old Town. I love you, Daddy. Tom Kanopka, listen to this. This is bingo in her own writing about her own writing. This is from the Madhouse. This is her Madhouse diary entitled Let Me Out, her time in the Wyoming gulag that is known as the mental health care system in this fucking country. Noticing my writing, it differs after calculation of time or the time to calculate word. Past tense scratching in the problem solve of phrase versus the dreaded here and now, which I avoid at all costs. All cost of the present state, so it may seem. She doesn't want to write in the fucking present tense because she doesn't want to accept where she is. And no, I don't feel any more artistic than a simple fuck you, I hate you, I love you, I wish to die. It's the necessary consumption of time. Harder to swallow than medication and harder to pass with constipation. The slowest second hand belongs to a clock above my head and my bowels work better than my brain. This goes on. I could, this whole <laughs> fucking chapter, there's just <clears throat> so much fucking good writing in this. And if, if, if you can accept yourself in that situation, which is completely fucked, if you can imagine yourself like stuck, you wake up, you've been going south, you wake up with that hangover where you go, what did I do last night? But this is a hangover that's been building over years and it doesn't go away and it just gets worse. And what the fuck is happening? What did I do? And it just gets worse. Well, then that's my book. <laughs> Bingo. Uh, good luck on other interviews. Thank you. <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, the, the one thing people need to know is before any seizure, before the coma, before mental institutions, I was a fucking complete retard. And uh, I, I read, before I wrote my book, before what you read, before that happened, I had maybe, I calculated everything and I'd maybe read seven books in my entire life i don't have a style i don't have a fucking that's why this is so good because it's honest okay like it's in the moment honest you're honest about how you wrote it i just looked up fucking big words I and did. i killed the time but it's so perfectly and, and the whole arc of it from I wake up in a mental institution to the day you get let out yeah. and you're, f I, spoiler alert. Yeah. The, the <laughs> last she line of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, uh, that's why I said earlier, she could not do this now. Oh. And I, that's, I wonder how much of that insanity people miss because it makes them that creative. Even though it's destroying their lives, like several times in this, 
you mentioned Lucille, which was your alter ego mm-hmm. that you put out when you're manic. You call that Lucille. Yeah. I know I don't want her back, but I do. I'd rather have that than apathy. And mm-hmm. then other times I can't go back to that. And anyone who's dealt with mental illness will so, this will fuck you up. This book will fuck you up. This diary, I should say. It ain't a book. You ain't going back there. In fact, you're going to bed at 7.30 at night because you're so fucking hammered off at two well, drinks. Yes, just to have a drink. So I was doing that. Oh, that helped. Yeah, this, 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 is the, this is the podcast that's going to launch your book. And I fucked it up by saying, maybe you should relax. You were so nervous. I, I have a question, Doug. Disaster. You read the book. No, we saved you. You told me early. Hey, if I if I if I don't know the answer to a question, save me. I didn't know you you'd have an answer and you wouldn't be able to enunciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, you read the book in two thousand and five. Yep. And twelve years later, you read it again. Mm-hmm. That was about a year ago, and now you were going through it again today. And we've already said this before. You've been firsthand aware of these incidents. You've seen things firsthand. You've had to deal with things on the phone while working, while things were happening in Bisbee. All of these things. Reading the book, did you get a, an insight differently than what you've known firsthand that you, like things you didn't know or things you didn't appreciate about what Bingo's gone through? It made me, first of all, it made me want to go into a fucking jail cell to write where I had no distractions. You know. <laughs> Kenny and Derek are here for football, and oh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to be rude, but yeah, I was try, trying to write a book. But no, go ahead, yeah, go ahead, try to cook fucking chicken tenders on a grill with gasoline. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Jealousy was the one thing I didn't expect you to say. <laughs> well, you, you to 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 write that well, and when what I was that whole you know, paragraph I was starting to read where. She's doing this out of a necessity to maintain some semblance of what sanity she thought she had. She had to write. It goes on in that paragraph to talk about, no, I'm not writing for anyone else but me. Like, you're embarrassed about people that might read this, which I understand as a comic. And every comic out there who writes anything in a notebook is secretly terrified that someone will one day find their notebook and they'll be shut it. Perfect timing, Chris. Like I'll I'll fix Bingo. You had to go through this because you have aside from the uh, uh, manic depression, bipolar, uh-huh. schizoaffective. You're also OCD, which I think is a bullshit kind of thing. I do too. I I hear you. Go but, ahead. But but. When I was reading this, I, I things that I know you have proclivities about. That's where you're like I can't even deal with that. Well, I OCD is just annoyance amplified. Where you talk in the book about you, just the color of the pen you have. You have a blue pen and you mm-hmm. hate it, and the type of paper you have to write on is some dollar store shit you make Regal reference to. <laughs> yes. You actually wrote down the dollar remember. store brand yeah. of shit and yeah. go into how France must have such better paper because <laughs> yeah. they're exporting the shit paper to Papier. Dollar General. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fucking funny. Uh, uh, but you talk about bubble writing. Someone yeah. wrote in bubble writing and you hate that. And I have the same weird shit with, you know, open mouth chewing or underhanding the toilet paper. Yeah. I go in after football or something and someone's put a new roll of toilet paper on, but they underhanded it. No, you overhand. I don't trust anyone who underhands the toilet paper. But I, that's an annoyance for me. For you, I can go to work. That day, I don't curl up <laughs> fetal in a ball because someone has underhanded the toilet paper. <laughs> so that's what OCD, it's, it's annoyance amplified to a point you can't function. Debilitating. Yes. Yeah. What's your OCDs? No, you don't want to talk about it? 
Damn. She wants she wants out. She wants out of the No, I think hole. she just realized she's the one who's been underhanding the toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's th- that's a thing? <laughs> <laughs> Who? <what? laughs> There's a lot of that. There's anyway, just read it. All right, bingo. We're going to let you off the hook. All right. As <laughs> you're wiping drool off your chin. <laughs> First of all, I was going to say, you've only... Liquid cocaine. <laughs> peppermint liquid or cocaine. liquid cocaine now is uh, peppermint oils. Essential oils. Essential oils yeah. is a plug from Bingo. Peppermint <laughs> essential oils are are what kept her peppy enough through this podcast to launch her book. <laughs> I take full credit, but I do have to say, you only had two drinks, but you ha- you pour them in pint glasses... You don't really drink anymore, so I'm sorry. I thought maybe a drink would loosen you up, and okay. two made you. You were. She was mixing vodka with grapefruit Perrier and chocolate protein shake. Well, I got contra- I got confused. Okay. Yeah, this is not going to be your best interview ever. Oh yeah, I already but it won't feel be your that. Worst. I feel that it wasn't my best interview ever. Thanks for bringing it up. You Fucking dick wad. I think it's the best one today. No, really. <laughs> All right, Chaley, uh, give him uh, some beats on where to find the book. Cause I, I, My book? Yeah, Chaley's okay. got the notes here. You got the, the book right there. The diary is entitled Let Me Out, A Madhouse Diary by Amy Bingo Bingaman. So uh, get that today, November 13th is this when this is coming out. All right, no, I'm 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 reading this. This is Ch- uh, uh, Hannigan's notes. I'm looking for bullet points. Uh, I'll, t- I'll a- tell you the easiest way to do Go, this. Go do it. Obviously, you can you can search Bingo's name on Amazon. Eventually, it'll be up there. As of right now, I'll, uh, there's going to be a link up. You can buy. You can pre-order the book from DougStanup.com in the merch area, and Bingo is going to sign some copies. So and, that's that's the best place. Yeah. And then we'll and, also put the links out when Twitter and all that. When- and the follow-up album will come out a few days from that. Uh, I think November sixteenth uh, is the the target, um, and "Are You Amused" is the name of the album. And the album, as far as I'm concerned, only makes sense if you read the diary sure. because it incorporates a lot of this. It's like if you another deep track like Ninth Configuration. If you ever heard "From the Inside" by Alice Cooper. I know all of that. It was an album he wrote about his time in a mental institution. And I know all of that by heart. Uh, and I talked to him backstage at a concert once. And I said, that's, uh, I'm sorry. I knew I was going to get drunk and s- say all this dumb <laughs> shit to you. Just like you guys say to me, hey, I don't want to be that guy. I was that guy to Alice Cooper. <laughs> hey, I know. And he said, all of that was true. Uh, Millie and Billy, fucking Jackknife yeah. Johnny, all these characters Bingo brought to life before she uh, just got uh, shit hammered on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, she's not that retarded in real life. Everyone <laughs> talks to me after shows. <laughs> I do bits about Bingo on my shows so I don't have to one by one say, hey, how's Bingo doing? Well, she's doing better than she was tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hey! Hey! <laughs> no, we gotta do some thank yous. Thank you. I'm. No, I, I have a. I, I. I'm. I'm stacked deep in thank yous that I have to throw up, but I. They're buried in all this shit. I've been on the road. This is the one that I'm gonna give to you because. Uh, and bingo, stay here for this. A good friend of ours, a killer termite since the uh, before killer termites existed days from MySpace days, Jen Hollywood. One of us, she's, uh, she got out of jail by agreeing to do six months of forced rehab in Detroit, Highland Park, and she needs cigarettes, just like Bingo did, and uh, this is why I'm reading this, because Bingo, in your book, you talked about how important letters were from just your sisters. Like, there was only a few people that talked to you at that point. And Mail it, was huge. It took you through the day. It took you to tomorrow. And what else is huge? Cigarettes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Jen Hollywood, if you're in Highland Park, Michigan, just deliver them direct. Otherwise, if you're someone who could 
just mail some camel crush silvers. I'm not going to read the whole letter, but she's one of us and she's fucking desperate and she's six months in the hole. So send Jennifer Mive Mifsud, M I F S U D, AKA Jen Purple Hair. See? She is one of us. Google gobble. Jen Mifsud. Ready for the address? 245 Pitkin, Highland Park, Michigan, 48203. Send it to Jen. Jen Purple Hair would appreciate, or just send her a fucking postcard or a letter because she's stuck there for another five months. She's six months in. No. She has a list of grievances, a list of demands. I got it written on the <laughs> palm of my hands, but we're going to close on Bingo's song. As, Are you amused? Are you amused? By Amy Ding Dong Bing Bong Bingo Bingaman. <laughs> I have declared war against my brain in order to save my mind. The battle wounds don't seem to bother me so long as, so long as I know they will heal with time. And the scars remind me to appreciate the days I don't have to serve and protect my country, my code, my propensity. I'll surrender to laughter. Carry on without you Won't you like to see the graveyard?
try to enunciate more. Okay. You're sounding I'm, a little drunk. Well, I'm I'm nervous. As well. Okay. I'm just saying. But, but, yeah, we'll pace ourselves, but just try to enunciate. Okay, you got it. All right. 